Assalamu alaikum everyone. It is your favorite model host and founder of Sour. It's Alia here um, and I miss you guys. I haven't seen y'all in a long time um, and that's primarily my fault because you know Ramadan came up and then Eid and then my birthday was like two days ago. So if you haven't told me happy birthday then what are you doing? Okay so <clears throat> in this YouTube video and I'm going to do better with uploading because I've been seeing y'all comments. Y'all think y'all slick. Y'all be telling me that I need to post more. But y'all, like, I think a lot of people don't know, but I do everything on my own. Um, I do not have a manager. I do not have an assistant. I have a graphic designer, but um, she only works for my nonprofit organization, which is Sour. Um, so everything else is on my own, y'all. Y'all know I'm active on TikTok, Instagram, and now YouTube. So I'm trying the best that I can to get all the content out to y'all. And if there's anything that y'all want to see, please let me know. Like, comment it. Um, as far as emails, I want to say this on YouTube because I brought it to TikTok and I brought it to Instagram, but I didn't bring it here. My YouTube, my, my business email is only for business purposes only. It is only for if you need me, if you need advice, if you need to talk, it is not for you, for uh, the brothers to send their their thirst traps and marriage um, wants. They're not even marriage proposals at this point. They're marriage wants. Um, control your nephs, brother, uh, brothers. Please, 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 please. I'm a sister at the end of the day. I'm somebody's child. I'm somebody's daughter. Um, and I'm somebody's sister. Okay, so, um, yeah. With that being said, today I wanted to talk to you all about two things that I have been constantly being asked which is one um my name and then two what do i miss from my old life before i was muslim so for those of you who are new here my name is alia my birth name is Trenkel reeves um and i reverted to islam last year after um fasting for ramadan and somebody gifted me a quran so I actually make a year as a Muslim, inshallah, April 28th, 2024. That's when I make a year. So in about two weeks. Um, so hmm, let's address this name situation uh, because I've been noticing that no matter how many followers I gain, a lot of people do not know my name. It doesn't bother me fully, but to some extent, I work so hard on my videos. I want people to know my name. So, um, I'm gonna tell you guys why I decided to choose Alia. First of all, for any reverts in here, you do not have to change your name to a Muslim name. You do not have to change your name to an Arabic name. You don't have to. Um, I have many reasons of why I changed my name, but one of them being is, um, you know, there is a stereotype that if you meet a black person, um, that black person is nine times out of 10 a revert, which is untrue um and there whether we like it or not there is racism in islam um islam itself is perfect and muslims are not so one of those reasons one of the reasons why i decided to go by alia is because i wanted people automatically to assume that i'm a born muslim because when you see my skin already they already assume that i'm not muslim i mean i'm not a born muslim but then you say yeah my name is trinkel they like, hmm, okay, she reverted. I want to know your reverse story. You know, and it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with other people wanting to know your reverse story, but the assumptions is just not for me. Um, so I decided to go by Alia. And I chose Alia um, after making loads of dua because I wanted a name that resonated with me. I didn't want to pick Khadija or Fantima or Noor. Like, I didn't think any of those things resonated with me. And so I made a lot of dua and I was sitting at the table about to sign my Shahada certificate with my friends. And I was like, if you saw me, the, and they're all born Muslims. I was like, if you saw me, what name would you think? And I got literally Khadija, Fantima, Isatu, um, until one of my friends was like, what about Alia? And I was like, what does it mean? And it means exalted. It means the most beautiful, like, high, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's giving me, like, it's giving Alia, you know? Um, and another reason why I decided to go by Alia is because Trinkel wasn't a nobody. 
she was known. Trinkel was a wrestling captain. Trinkel had scholarships. Um, Trinkel did so many things for people. Trinkel was known. Trinkel was the person everybody knew of in college. The little black girl who was insecure and then now she's confident. That was me. So when I decided to go by Alia, it was because of those many reasons. It wasn't because I was trying to hide who I was or hide the things that I accomplished, what I used to be, who I used to be. It was mainly, it was mainly for protection. It was to give a name to the new life and the new journey that Allah had granted me. It was, mm, how do I say it? It was to make sure I didn't give people an easy route of judging me. And if I had decided to become a hijabi, I didn't want people to have access to my old life without me being able to tell my side of the story first. So it's not that I hated my name. It's not that people bullied me into changing my name to a Muslim name. Um, it's merely just because I started a new chapter and anybody who knew me before I was Muslim, it's completely new. So it doesn't trigger me when people call me Trinkel. It's it maybe a little, maybe like five percent, um, just because I rarely hear it. Um, so I when I reverted, I moved to California, and everybody in California knows me as Halia. Um, a lot of my friends in New York call me TK, and back home in Houston, I'm Trinkel or TK. <laughs> so um, I what I would prefer to go by, I would prefer to go by Alia. That is my preference. Um, and I try to like implement that in every video that I like say, I try to like tell people like, it's Alia here, it's Alia. But I do know it's very, very confusing with my social media handles being at Trinkel Reeves. And that is just primarily because my modeling agencies they have my name as Trinkel Reeves. Whenever I sign any documents, because legally my name is Trinkel Reeves, I just, it's, I feel like it's easier to put my social media handles as that just because any documents, any legal documents that I have to sign, it is Trinkel Reeves. Do I plan on legally changing my name? Yes, I do. Um, honestly, to be honest, a lot of people have been asking me about my last name as well. My last name is Reeves, and it's my father's last name. Um, I would love to change it, but if I changed it to anything, it would be Jones, which is my mom's last name. I personally don't think it's any point of doing that just because when I get a husband, I would prefer to change my last name to my husband's last name. Um, a lot of people have different opinions on that when you're Muslim. One thing about me is I really try not to ignore my culture. I really, really try not to. Everybody else everybody else don't ignore it, so why I got to ignore it? Um, I know a lot of people say, like, you shouldn't change your last name. I'm changing mine. There is no hyphenating. There is no nada. Okay? That is a whole new woman. Like, I am a whole new woman. Um, so if you are in the mix of this, if you are feeling the way that I'm feeling, going through this, change your name. If you want to do it, if you want to do it, if you if you want people to call you by whatever name that you have decided, you have to make it amongst yourself to assert that name into your life. Whether it be hard. I met some a reaver who changed his name to Abdul Rahman Karim, something, something. I don't know. It was so long that I was like, I'm not calling you that. I'm going to call you by your regular name. And I had to stand, like, I had to, like, take a sit, step back and tell myself, like, Alia, if your name wasn't as easy as one, two, three, then... So those were, like, two of the reasons I, I didn't want anybody to find out, you know, look me up and see, you know, what it was. And then on top of that, I, I, I love the name Alia. Um, so I would prefer if everybody called me Alia. I know it's very confusing with the Trinkel Reeves right now, but if you called me Trinkel that's okay um i'm not gonna block you or anything like that all right now this one is okay so usually whenever i do my youtube videos i usually write out a script just because i don't want to go on a tangent y'all know how black people get we you know start talking about stuff and then 
And then we end up forgetting like what we was talking about. So usually I write a script. For this question, um, what do I miss about my old life? I didn't write a script because I want this to be as authentic as possible. Whatever pops into my head, you know that it is the truth. And this question, I'm going to answer it for the born Muslims that are not on their dean. I'm going to answer it for the reverts who are struggling with accepting the new life. And I'm going to answer it for anybody who's thinking about Islam and just too scared to take that next step because Islam is too strict for you or you assume that Islam is too strict. The only thing that I would probably say that I missed about my old life is that I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. Once you know the things in this world that are haram and the things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is so hard for you, it should be so hard for you to maneuver in this world as a disbeliever. That is probably the one of the only things that I I can say off the top of my head that I miss. I wished sometimes I wish that I didn't know certain things um, because somebody recently told me this and I said that I would never repeat it. But I'm going to repeat it because I want you all to know that when this person said this to me, it didn't hurt my feelings. It didn't make me say, oh, my gosh. Am I too religious now? No, it didn't make me. Instead, I thought in my mind, this person told me, hold on, let me tell y'all. This person told me that they wish they would have met me before I was Muslim because I'm too uptight I and I'm too cautious. And the first thing I thought in my mind when that person told me that was on the day of judgment, I want you to testify that to Allah. I want you to tell Allah that this girl right here, she did everything at the at, to the best possible ability that she could. You thought that was an insult to me? You wish you would have met me before I was Muslim? Because maybe I would have. And that's probably one of the things that I love about the fact that I'm Muslim now. Honestly, it's kind of scary how sensitive Islam has made me like I and to be honest I don't even just think that it's Islam I think it's the fact that I'm on social media as well that's probably another reason why I've been so sensitive it's just because I've come across so many people and I had y'all I don't know like y'all tell me if I'm wrong but like if you're a revert like when I reverted to Islam I had this high standard for Muslims. Like, I thought Muslims didn't do no wrong. I thought when I came from Christianity, it was not about to be no drama. It was not about to be nobody talking about nobody. It was not about to be no judging. That's what I thought. Hey! That's what I thought, y'all. So, that's probably another thing, like, Y'all, uh, I don't know how to say this because, like, I did all the partying. I did all the, the, the clubbing. I did, I did the haramness. I did it. And I don't, I don't miss it for nothing. And one thing that I tell myself and one thing that I tell my friends is I'd be a fool if I ever thought that I would never be capable of doing those things again. So one of the ways that I stay so strictly on my dean, oh my God, I'm about to cry. One of the ways I stay so strictly on my dean is I don't put myself in those environments that remind me of the life that I used to live. My friends go to the club, I'm staying at home. Some of my friends smoking weed, I'm not around. And it's so crazy because I don't really have too many non-Muslim friends. I have Muslim friends that aren't practicing. And I help them to the best ability that I can. I don't judge them anything like that. But I, I don't intend to steer away from non-Muslims. 
But at this stage of where I'm at, I, I want to be around people that I can sit down and have a like-minded conversation with. I want to be around people who, even if they don't implement the principles of Islam or the Sunnah, they know. So when I respond in a way or when I, when I act in a way, it's not something that's weird or abnormal for them. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I live that life, y'all. I don't miss it. I don't. I think about all the nights while I was crying. You think you want to live that life? You think you want to go out and party and drink just because you've never done it before? You see people doing it on social media. That is not a life that you want to live. That that to to not have Allah Subhanahu wa Taala there for you, to have Allah Subhanahu wa Taala not at your disposal. Are you crazy? To 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 drink and then for forty days. You're praying, but Allah is not listening to you. That's a life that you want to live. Do you know how many times I call upon Allah daily? Do you know how many times that the prophets, peace be upon them, called upon Allah and Allah listened? And Allah was there? Every time, even when you don't call upon Allah, Allah is still there for you. Y'all want to live that life because it look cool. Because, yeah, Jannah is the priority, but I'm in this dunya. It's hard for me to make friends. It's boring. That ain't a life you want to live. You know how many times I cried? You know how many things I forced myself to do? People I forced myself to be around just so I could be cool, just so I could network, just so I can feel the, the time that I could have been in my room praying, that I could have been in my room watching a lecture or a sermon, but I was outside. I would much rather prefer this life because I have something to look forward to. One of the reasons why most Christians revert to Islam and they're so heavy on their deen is because we have something to look forward to. We have some we we have something to be afraid of. We have guidance. All three of those things in one. In Christianity, the excuse is, I'm a sinner. I was born a sinner. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. All I got to do is ask for forgiveness. We we all, no, <laughs> it don't work like that, Miss Nine. We got something to be scared of. We got the punishments of the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Them three questions, you get asked on the day of judgment. I ain't heard about them over there. And this is not to knock them at all. But this is so that y'all can understand something. We have the blueprint. Allah has given us the answers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us the key. Our prophets, peace be upon them, did not go through all of that hardship for us to maneuver in this world blindly. Allah put them through that. So that we'd have guidance. So we'd have the, the road map of what it is that we're supposed to do. Who it is that we're supposed to be. What we're supposed to look for on the day of judgment. How we pass the test in this dunya. So that we can live graciously in Jennifer Dose. Y'all want to live a life that y'all know nothing about. Y'all want to live a life of confusion. Of being lost. With that being said, I don't want y'all to think that I'm... That I'm you know, going off on y'all, because I promise you I'm not. I just really want y'all to understand that when you are Muslim, you have the blueprint. A lot of the times why other people from religions will tell you that they drunk or that they smoke or that they party is because it was to fill the time. What else can you do with your time? As far as being a Muslim, you're five, five hours one one hour of whatever time is taken up by prayer. It doesn't matter where you go, you know that at this time you gotta pray. If you out till one in the morning, that's on you. You gonna be sleeping when you have to get up at 5 a.m. to pray. You know? Um, so this is not me, this is not me being mean. I don't wanna be mean. I just want y'all to really understand that y'all were born with what we crave now we're born with the guidance the knowledge all of it the support the love so why are you 
not taking advantage of all of it? Why are you not absorbing every single thing that you can? So to answer that question, to sum all of that up, there is not too many things that I, there's not too many things that I miss about my old life. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess even then still, I, I, I think I've gained more confidence as a Muslim now. Um, but it's just different level of confidence. Like everything is different. You can't really compare the two. Um, I would just say that I'm less lost. I'm less confused. And I would say I'm more hurt now that I'm Muslim. And before I wasn't like, before I'd just be like, I don't care. Now it's just like, why do you act like that? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you know, we have to forgive as Muslims. So like sometimes it'll be that, like I don't wanna forgive somebody, but I have to. Or there's a lot of things that I don't wanna do. And the Sunnah says I have to, or the, the you know, or the, the Quran say I have to do it. So that would probably be the only thing, the, the hardest thing about everything. But y'all probably need to just straighten out. Um, yeah, like I, I'll make a part two if y'all need more explanation of everything that I'm saying. But your priorities need to straighten out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should definitely be your priority because Allah doesn't need us. We need Allah and your actions speak when you aren't a practicing Muslim. They speak, they don't, it, don't, it doesn't speak as loud as when you are a practicing Muslim, but actually I lied, it does. When you're not practicing, your actions definitely speak louder. Um, you're more irritable, you're more aggressive, you're mean, you're not as giving, um, you're not as understanding. So yeah, just straighten out. Like I know it's definitely easier said than done, but I feel like in Islam, it's easy. It's it's easy. Like you you, all you have to do is open up the Quran. All you have to do is open up a book of du'as, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will guide you the rest of the way. Love you guys. Y'all know if y'all have any questions, comments, or concerns, y'all can DM me or email me. Remember what I said in the beginning about my email, okay? Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I will be back next week. I promise. Inshallah. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, send it to your friends, send it to your family. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum.